With less than 24 hours until the first pitch of the iconic White Sox and Yankees Field of Dream game, I put together a short list of things that you probably didn't know about Field of Dreams. Number 1. Kevin Costner wasn't the studio's initial choice for Ray Kinsella. Tom Hanks was originally offered the role but decided to pass. Producers didn't initially approach Kevin Costner about the film because they thought he wouldn't be interested in another baseball movie having just finished Bull Durham. Number two, the film's original title, Shoeless Joe, reminded the test audience of a hobo. Audiences during the test screening said they weren't fans of the name Shoe This Joe because it reminded them of a hobo. And of course, Universal took great concern with this. The studio told director slash writer Phil Robinson they were going to change the title to Field of Dreams. Author W.P. Kinsella was completely okay with the title as his original book title was Dreamfield but his publishing company had changed it to Shoeless Joe. Number three, the Field of Dreams baseball diamond stuck around after filming. The land where the baseball field was built is on a farm in Dyersville, Iowa. After shooting wrapped, the farm's owner decided to hang onto it as a tourist attraction, building a small souvenir stand and inviting visitors to come and play ball as they pleased. The field remained open under the Lansing family until 2010 when the family put the farm's 193 acres up for sale. Number four, shooting the film was more depressing than enjoyable for the director, Phil Robinson. Even though Robinson was already an established director with hits like Fletch and All of Me under his belt, shooting Field of Dreams brought him a little bit of anxiety and depression. The crew was under a tight shooting schedule because Kevin Costner had to leave in August to film the movie Revenge and Robinson began to doubt that his film would live up to the book's expectations. Producer Lawrence Gordon had to convince him that the movie would come together well in the end. Number five, parts of the field had painted grass. While constructing the baseball field, the crew brought in hundreds of pallets of sod, but due to the haste of the shooting schedule, the grass didn't have time to appropriately take root and some of it died. To make up for this, the crew painted over the dead pallets of grass. Number six, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon were extras in the movie. When Ben Affleck started working on the movie The Sum of All Fear, he said to the director, Phil Robinson, nice working with you again. When Robinson asked him what he meant by that compliment, Affleck explained that he and Matt Damon were among the thousands of extras in the Field of Dreams Fenway Park scene. Number 7. Author W.P. Kinsella didn't give his movie a perfect review. W.P. Kinsella was asked to write a review of the movie for a Canadian periodical. He gave it 4 out of 5 stars, taking issue that the character of Mark wasn't villainous enough and thinking that Gaby Hoffman didn't look believable as a child of Ray and Annie. Number 8. J.D. Salinger wasn't a fan of his fictional version. When W.P. Kinsella's novel Shoeless Joe was published, writer J.D. Salinger was rather unhappy with the fictional portrayal of himself in the book and threatened legal action if the book was ever transferred to film. To work around this possible problem, the studio created the character of Terrence Mann as a replacement for Salinger. Number 9. If You Build It is one of the most misquoted movie quotes of all time. Perhaps more often than not, people misquote the movie's famous line as if you build it, they will come. If you build it, he will come. Yeah, at least get spotted enough to land it as one of the most misquoted lines on numerous lists, but at the same time is cited at number 39 on AFI's 100 Best Movie Quotes. Number 10. The community of Dyersville participated in a blackout for the film. During a lunch with the Iowa Chamber of Commerce, Robinson described his idea of the final scene with headlights stretching out on the horizon. The chamber agreed it could be done and Dyersville was blacked out as part of a community event with commuters driving into the field and switching between high beams and low beams to create the illusion of movement. Number 11. Seven. The cornstalks were too tall for Kevin Costner. During filming of the movie, Iowa was in the middle of a drought and the cornfields had to constantly be watered to ensure the corn would grow tall enough for the ballplayers to appear into. 
However, the corn grew too fast, and in some scenes, Costner had to walk on an elevated plank just so that the corn would appear just above his shoulders. Number 12. The movie was a grand slam at the box office. Field of Dreams was a cash cow for Universal Pictures who opened the movie in select theaters a week before Memorial Day before expanding it nationwide as a summer blockbuster. The movie gained praise from most critics and scored big with audiences, pulling in $84 million and the box office and playing in many theaters until December of 1989. So which of these 12 facts were your favorite? Drop a comment down below and let me know what your favorite fact was. Other than that guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I will catch you in my next one.